A lot of questions, no surprise, on the GDP deflator. Um, this is, you know, one part is basically, is there a valid and logical reason they would they use such a small GDP deflator? Is this purely politics? And then the second part is kind of the how that how the deflator actually works. So like yeah, yeah. yeah okay. So there's no no there is no there is no valid or um, you know, truth based reason that you would empirical reason why you'd use a number of zero point six percent for inflation. Okay, inflation is nowhere near 0.6%. And by the way, it's rising, uh, certainly in the face of crude oil, the busting move to the upside. So again, it is what it is. You got a lot of different things going on. You got wages at nine year highs. You have the CRB index that's up 9% for the year to date. That's a commodity uh, price sample basket of, again, of, um, of 19 different commodities. Uh, oil's up 34% inclusive of last year's correction. There's absolutely no truth or validity to that number. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be trite or political about it. Uh, and if your view is that somebody politically was inspired to do that, I'd love to get that data point because now we're really talking. Um, I don't know if ever in US history any government official has effectively tried to steer uh, the numbers. Um, we do know that that's happened in many arms of government, uh, military uh, generals and colonels telling people you know, within their ranks to make up numbers. This has all happened. If you haven't read Boyd, by the way, and you want to learn about that within the Air Force's ranks, that, uh, according to him, is a fact too. So again, plenty of that. Now, we're going to have to table that part of the discussion because that's not where I make my money. Uh, it's on getting the direction of the actual real GDP numbers right. So this is the other part of your question, I guess, Jonesy, right? Yep. Uh, which is, you know, how does that work? Uh, how, how does it effectively work that you can uh, overstate GDP? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you have, um, let's get this thing back to a color that you can read. <clears throat> so the way that GDP is stated, GDP is stated nominally. Okay, so you have a nominal number of GDP, nominal growth, nominal, and then you have to subtract inflation to get what is called real GDP. Pretty straightforward. So again, the way that you get this, you get the, this number to be higher, you get the GDP number to be higher if you understate this number. So there's a number that the, the, the government you know, comes up with a forecast on called the deflator right here, the inflation estimate or forecast, or in our case, now cast, which is again, nowhere near, uh, Josephine, if you can go to slide 15, you can see that our now cast for inflation and the CPI number itself, which is headline CPI, that's not what they always use, but the deflator has a central tendency to approximate those numbers. So we're, we're talking 1.6%, not 0.6%, okay? So that's how you get real GDP. Uh, again, the government, if they understate the inflation number or the understate the deflator, they get a higher GDP number. If they overstate the inflation number, which they also have a central tendency to do sometimes, certainly not by as much as they just understated it. Uh, but if they were to overstate inflation, then you'd be understating the headline GDP number. That's the real GDP number that you get uh, on the headline like Friday. 